Greetings! There are several overlapping events going on at the moment, so let me summarize what's coming up in Update 095. Also, YouTube has added a chapters feature, so you can now browse the topics in the description by timecode. Be sure to watch to the end of the video for news of a celebration. So assuming you haven't already skipped ahead, let's get started. Paul on the bowl and Kitty is my darling. Paul on the bowl and the bowl and Paul. The Soviet cruiser changes enter their second of three stages in 095, which hit CIS and NA on Wednesday this week and C and EU on Thursday. In 094, we saw early release of the new heavy line, which will eventually end in Petropavlovsk. Tallinn and Riga were in early access and apparently will remain in early access through 095 until 096, when Petropavlovsk will be released presumably along with Tallinn and Riga as the fully researchable heavy cruiser branch. In 095, the tech tree split will be shown in the tech tree, and Nevsky will apparently become available to research above Donskoy at the head of the new light branch. There's no note about Nevsky being early access, so I think it will be available to research in 095. I'm saying apparently a lot because the 095 patch notes are a bit vague, so I'm making a couple of assumptions here, so please forgive me if I turn out to be wrong. To make room for Nevsky, Moskva is being converted into a special ship available for coal from the armory. Kirov is also being removed from the tech tree and converted into a coal premium, and also available in the armory. Let's cover the most frequently asked questions about this conversion. If you have ever had these ships researched, you will get the special or premium version free at the start of the update. If the ships are in your port when the update hits, they'll be converted. If they're not, they will be added. For this reason, you can get free credits if you currently own the ships. Sell them before the patch hits to get the sale value of the ships, and then they will be credited back to you for free. This is an exploit, but it's one that Wargaming is happy for you to do. If you do not sell them before 095 arrives, you will not get credit compensation. You have been warned. Secondly, if you are in the middle of completing the mission chain for the Moskva unique upgrade, don't worry, your mission progress will be preserved and you can still complete the mission up to the 31st of December using the special version of MOSFA. The legendary is still mountable on the special version of MOSFA. Thirdly, if you didn't purchase the premium camouflage for MOSFA, you will get it for free. If you did purchase it, there is no compensation and please don't shoot the messenger, I'm not wargaming. Fourth, if you reset the MOSFAR line before 095 hits, the first win research point symbol will appear on Nevsky when the update arrives instead of MOSFAR. Finally, the other common question is whether you will get Nevsky for free. You will not. You are keeping your MOSFAR, or getting a free one if, you haven't got it if you've had it researched but haven't got it in your port right now, so you're not going to get an extra free tier 10 ship. Nevsky is a new ship and you'll need to research it from Donskoy. The same goes for Kotovsky at tier 5. The main feature of update 095 is the start of the Hamburg Dockyard event, which continues for two updates until the end of 096. The Dockyard event is a bit like the Puerto Rico event, except the final ship, tier 8 battleship Odin, is not free, it's a premium ship. The event gives you the chance to get Odin for up to a 90% discount by completing the Dockyard stages, and allows you really nice flexibility in terms of how much of the ship you want to get by playing compared to paying. The stages are completed either by purchasing them for doubloons, or by completing the associated directive stages across 095 and 096. There is a starter pack available for 8,000 doubloons, which will complete 8 of the 20 stages, but you must purchase this before you complete the first dockyard stage, as it will not be available once you've done that. Be careful if you race off completing the directive missions, as you could easily complete the first directive without realizing. 
The stages are normally 1750 doubloons each, so the starter pack makes that 1000 doubloons for each of those 8 stages, and might suit someone who wants to do the majority of the grind by playing, but doesn't have as much time to play as they would like. If you want to get the 90% discount by playing, you'll need to complete all 6 directives which start on the 11th of June and finish on the 4th of August, with one new directive per week as usual. Each set of directive missions will have two specific missions which give a dockyard stage uh, completion as a reward, and a third will be awarded for completing the directive set itself, so you can complete three dockyard stages per week for a total of 18 stages over six weeks plus a spare two weeks at the end in case you need some more time. Odin requires 20 stages, so you will need to spend a minimum of 3,500 doubloons to complete those last two stages and get the ship, but that's quite a nice price for a tier 8 premium battleship if you would have been playing the game anyway. You do not have to buy stages 19 and 20 specifically, you can actually purchase any two stages at any point in the grind, but if you're trying to get the 90% discount I recommend waiting until you've unlocked up to stage 18 so you don't risk wasting your doubloons in the event that real life stops you from playing for some reason. If you purchase the 8000 doubloon starter pack, uh, you do not need to purchase any further stages as that covers the two stages that you need to buy as a minimum. You can purchase individual stages at any time for 1750 doubloons each, and of course you can complete the whole thing on day one for 35,000 doubloons if you're an oil tycoon who sleeps on a pile of gold coins. The reward for the halfway point at stage 10 is tier 6 premium Graf Spey. If you already have her you'll get credit compensation as well as the camouflage and the commander. The stages themselves have rewards and include coal, premium time, signals, free XP, camos and gift containers. If you purchase some stages and subsequently complete the directives, you'll get 250 steel per stage as compensation, up to a total of 4,500 steel for purchasing 18 stages. It's a very expensive way to get steel, but it's there. Odin is not the strongest tier 8 battleship, but she's very interesting and I've had a lot of fun testing her. In a top tier match she can be a real bully, uh, if you enjoy Scharnhorst you'll probably like Odin. The mission system is having an overhaul in 095. The look of missions uh, in the port and also in the battle results screen have been redesigned. Mission requirements and chain progression should be easier to understand now. The possibility of all conditions for missions have also been introduced allowing you to choose how some missions are completed, suiting your playstyle more and hopefully meaning you won't be forced to play things you don't want to quite as often. Steel has also been added as a reward for daily missions, although only a very small amount. The look and feel of the armory has been refreshed. The sections are the same but they look a bit different so if you can't immediately find something click around a bit because it's still in there somewhere. Some ships are being added to the armory, Moskva for 244,000 coal, Kirov for 43,000 coal, tier 9 cruiser Siegfried for 47,000 research points and tier 10 Yamato variant Shikishima for 32,000 steel. Tier 9 cruiser Agia is being added to the German tech tree for 1 million free XP. 095 sees the start of the reworking of the unique upgrades in the game, also called legendaries. Changes are being made to the updates for Yuyang, Khabarovsk, Worcester, Des Moines, Kurfürst, Montana, Republique and Shimakaze. And this is based on data around popularity and effectiveness. If you want to read about these changes, see the patch notes for the changes or the dedicated devlog article which also explains why the changes are being made for each upgrade. Changes to other upgrades and the introduction of new upgrades will probably now be a continuous process, so expect more in the future. A new rank sprint season will kick off around the 24th of June and last for two weeks. It will be played at tier 8 in an 8v8 format. As usual, the rewards will be 10,000 coal, some credits and some signals. Two clan brawls are also happening. The first is Saturday the 20th of June in a 3v3 format at tier 10. The second one is on the 4th of July in a 4v4 format at tier 8. Both require one ship of each class per team. Clans can choose a prime time that suits them best and rewards include coal, credits and up to 100,000 elite commander XP. As the team sizes are small, don't forget that clans can run multiple teams simultaneously. 
An HDR makeover has been brought to Riposte, Operation Killer Whale, Defense of Naval Station Newport, Raptor Rescue, and Operation Narai. The ports Dunkirk, Kronstadt, Designer's Table, and Twitch Prime have also been updated. The Sleeping Giant map has had some island positions and heights changed on the right flank and near the spawns. What I call the Sewage Pipe Island on Greece has had the gap under the sword removed to prevent asymmetrical spotting through the island. Minor changes are being made to Valkyrie, Weymouth, Hawkins, New York, Ognevoy, Oudeloy, Grozovoy, Hakuryu, T-22 and Kremlin. The penetration of German destroyer HE is being standardised with the rest of the nation at one quarter penetration, giving the 128mm shells 32mm base pen and the 150mm shells 38mm base pen. The Warhammer 40k collaboration is coming during 095, but details haven't been released yet. Watch the news portal for more information. However, we know there will be two skinned versions of Amagi available, as well as commanders, voiceovers, permanent and consumable camouflages, containers and flags. Here are a few of the notable items from the list of other changes. Now, when you log into the game for the first time after an update, you'll see a short video about the update. This is a great change which hopefully will raise player awareness for the player base who don't read the news or engage with the rest of us. The Ultra sound option is being removed from the Wargaming Center launcher. Instead, it will be in-game in the audio options, so it's probably worth checking that your audio setting is how you want in case it selects an option by default. This is worth bearing in mind as there's a large audio update coming in 096, much of which will only apply to Ultra. An annoying mechanic has been in the game for as long as I can remember. The camera zooming out to maximum range when a spotter plane uh, is being used and you press shift to zoom in. This has been fixed. Presumably it now zooms to where you were last looking. I, I guess we'll find out. The bug of ghost shells appearing when firing very close to rocks has been fixed. The loud rocket plane drops and torpedo drop attack sounds have been fixed. This weekend, the 13th and 14th, I'll be casting the Schlagfest tournament on EU with Flambas. It starts at around 2pm CEST on both days and sees teams of seven fight each other at tier 7 with no class restrictions. Teams can bring whatever composition they like. It's run on a points table basis like football with each team playing each other team, uh, every other team twice. Uh, um, the team with the most points at the end of Sunday wins. There's a considerable prize pool and several King of the Sea clans are entering. Join me at twitch.tv slash statsbloke on Saturday and Sunday to watch. Finally, this week, it's my birthday and Wargaming have kindly provided a giveaway budget so I can run some ship giveaways. I wanted this to be open to my YouTube viewers as well as my Twitch viewers, so I've created the giveaways in a pop-up Discord server. The draws close at one hour intervals on Thursday evening UK time, which will be during my celebration stream. The prizes are Cossack, Graf Zeppelin, and two tier 9 premiums with the winner choosing from Alaska, Azuma, Friesland or Georgia. You can find the link to the pop-up server in the video description. Full details and rules are in the server itself. You can join me on Thursday evening UK time for the live celebration, but you don't need to watch to win as I know some of you are in very different time zones. That's it from me from this update. Please do go and follow me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash statsbloke where I stream several days each week. This month marks 18 months of me being a CC and I really do appreciate all your support and your companionship, so thank you. Take care of each other and I'll speak to you very soon.